Alright. We are alright. We are already loaded. Let's fire our trusty beaver up here one more time and get heading on towards home. We've got a little gas in the center tank this time, but we'll get that in cruise. We'll take off on the full tank. That's the front tank here. Beacons on. Mags are on. Pressurized fuel system real quick. Pump starter. Get some nav lights on, some strobes on, radios on. We don't need them yet, but we probably will as we continue here. Instrument lights, we'll turn those on, crank them down a little bit though, that's a bit obnoxious. There we go. Altimeter set, DG set. Artificial horizons calibrated, though hopefully the weather will be good enough that we won't need it. As radios over here go, I'm going to go ahead and set 500 feet. Yeah, I'll set about 700 feet in the uh, autopilot for now. Hopefully we'll get higher. And I'm also going to set the Nichols NDB up in the uh, in the ADF receiver here. This is uh, the Nichols NDB is co-located with the Annette Island VOR and airport. And it'll be a nice reference for us as we continue. Okay, we've already got our flight plan loaded. Just make sure we're set up to track the GPS flight plan on the autopilot. And so long, Wilson Narrows Cabin. Not much wind, but when there is, it looks like we have a little bit of a headwind, so we'll just take off northbound down the lake here. Turn around and head on out. Water rudders are down just to make this turn away from the spit of land here. Flaps are set, trim's good, water rudders are up. Go ahead and crack on a little carb heat just to forestall detonation there. There we go, our carb air temp is well into the green here. And here we go, one last time. back to about a cruise RPM setting. And we'll pull the power back a little bit as well. And that is the Wilson River ahead of us as we head southbound on our exit from Wilson Lake. We'll see what we can find for misty mooring scenery locations along the Wilson River here. See if we can hop up and over this little rise here. And so long, Wilson Narrows Cabin. Hopefully the next visitors enjoy it as much as our sports here have. Get over the 
this rise here. Alright. So there obviously is a plume of smoke from the uh, scenery location on the river. I believe that's the Brad's Bait and Barbecue there, actually. <laughs> I've tried to land on the river there before. Not quite enough room. I suppose you can do it if you hit it just right. Let's see a campfire going there near the river. And, uh, oh, there's a helipad there, so that's cool. notice totem poles along the river. You see that? Now, I think the Misty Moorings team said that that denotes different areas of the river that they landscaped. There's another camp over there with another campfire going and some kayaks beached. There, I believe, goes up to the upper Chicats Lake. There's another cabin area up there. Or is that the Wind Stanley Lakes drainage? Could be one or the other. I think that was upper Chicats. Wind Stanley Lakes drainage is up ahead on the right about 1230. seeing half of what's actually placed along this river by Misty Moorings cruising over it like this. The sceneries are designed for on the water, nice and slow boating. Yeah, that's the drainage that heads up to the uh, Wind Stanley Lakes area and eventually take you out to the Deep Canal. But we're going to go this way down through Wilson Arm. see the confluence of the Wilson River, which is what we've been following, and the Blossom River. And you'll see a bunch of big rocks in the river there. There's a whole series of them up here to the left, and you'll see some flashing boat navigation beacons. I think most of those were probably placed by Misty Moorings. That's the confluence of the Blossom River and the Wilson River, where it drains out into Wilson Arm, which is the water in front of us. And there's your airstrip. That is the uh, Wilson River Lodge scenery location by Misty Moorings. I believe it's a fictional location. But you can see they've got a dirt strip, a nice lodge. Dirt strip's a whole bunch of fun to land on. Nice and bumpy. And they've also got a seaplane landing area down here. There it is, your seaplane dock and boat dock. All right, and that takes us out over Wilson arm and uh, back to salt water. This is salt water. We're heading back out towards the Beam Canal. And the weather's pretty good around here. I'll go ahead and dial the autopilot up 2,000 feet and we'll go ahead and turn that on. Autopilot uh, nav mode and altitude mode. RPM back up to a climb RPM here until we reach 1,000 feet. Take a look behind us here as we climb. And there is our beaver climbing out of Wilson Arm. dirt strip at the Wilson River Lodge, straight behind the airplane now. And 
we are heading towards the termination of our day as a bush pilot. Just out of curiosity with the recording software here, what are we seeing? Whew. 13, 14 frames per second. Yeah. Alright, there's a cruise power setting. I did say we were going to get that fuel out of the center tank. If you look, you can see the uh, center tank has just a little bit of gas in it. If we drop down there and take a close look at it, what are we seeing? About uh, oh, six gallons of fuel in the center tank. We'll go ahead and get that. Switch back to the center tank here. I think we talked about this earlier, too. Milvis has modeled something neat, the uh, low fuel pressure caution light here, this amber light which we can press to test. Uh, it'll start flickering at us as we start to run that center tank dry. You know, in real life, you can expect that to be accompanied with uh, a stuttering engine, right? It's starting to sputter, but they haven't quite modeled that. But the, uh, the light is a nice visual indication that, hey, dummy, you're about to run dry, switch tanks. And of course, if you don't switch tanks, you will eventually run the tank dry and the engine will quit. So it's nice to have a little warning. So this back up in here is an interesting bay. It looks like on the sectional there is a low, low uh, elevation terrain route up through that valley that will take you over into the uh, Boca de Quadra area, which is another super iconic fjord in Misty Fjords. And I've never been up there. There are a few cabins up there, placed both by Orbex and Misty Moorings. So one of these days. Take a look back there. Yeah, one of these days. That's not the best way up the Boca de Quadra, but it is one way in. Nice shot back up uh, Wilson Arm there towards Sunset. Yeah, pretty good looking, uh, pretty good looking stretch here. And that is the Beam Canal ahead. Is looking pretty good down this way. Hopefully we'll be able to get our elevation and get up over in that island, huh? Let's see, we're out into the bottom of Wilson Arm here into an area. This is called Smeaton Bay right now. There's a little drainage to our right, which heads on up to a, a pond that is nameless in, uh, Orbex world, or I'm sorry, in the, uh, on the sectional anyway. Jump over to the right seat here. Yeah. I bet the pond is back up there because if it's charted on the sectional, it's probably in the Orbex scenery. I, I think I've said it before, I think the Orbex scenery is probably higher fidelity than the, the sectional charting data, to be honest with you. <laughs> but okay, this takes us out into Smeaton Bay. And, well, we're over Smeaton Bay. That's the Beam Canal ahead of us. That's the the canal that we came on up, heading towards Rudyard Bay to begin with. Rudyard Bay would be up here around the corner on the right. And I'm feeling pretty good about the weather. I think we'll stay at 1,000 feet for now, just so we can fly over Mary Island and see the lighthouse. But then after that, we'll climb. We'll probably try to get up to about 2,500 feet and see if we can't get over at Net Island. Our ADF is pointing towards Nichols, which is the, uh, it's roughly co-located with the Annette Island VOR and the Annette Island Airport. So, that is Smeaton Island right here. And there's a smaller island, that'll be just to the left over here, called Rudyard Island. And then we'll see a lava bay, and the, the lava bay cabin again up there as we exit the, uh, the south end of Beam Canal here.
there's even two small islands charted in front of Smeaton Island here, and there's certainly one of them. Start our left turn towards the beam, uh, or down the beam canal. Well, all right, here goes our left turn. Chime was an FS Captain Chime. Let me see, we have a message. I have a feeling it's going to tell us we're cleared for our arrival into uh, Misty's place. Look up messages. Cleared approach PF20. PF20 is Misty's place. No assigned gate and no weather available at this time. Well, none of that's a surprise, right? Now, we could dial in the uh, catch can APHIS and pick that up from here, probably. Since we do have this uh, pseudo A car system from FS Captain, we'll go ahead and punch in a little digital request, which realistically these days, there's probably ADSB towers up here that I bet you could tag, probably one on the net island. So you could probably get data data link weather via ADSB here, even if you were in an aircraft without A cars. Let's see. I know we're not going to get weather from PF20 because it's not a weather station, nor are any of these. However, we can also specify weather station. Let's specify catch a can, see if we can't get the weather for catch a can. Catch a can. It's 3.50 at 5. 33 miles. Well, this is FSX weather. Let's switch to ASN weather. Three fifty five ten 5, 10 miles, scattered 2,700, overcast 4,000. 5 degree temp dew point split, 3010 is the meter. Harbor winds 348 at 8. So 355, that's perfect. We'll go ahead and land straight into Misty's place when we get there, which is uh, roughly a 29 or a 30 runway. And uh, actually, you know, we have been making water landings this whole trip. Why don't we go ahead and land on the gravel at Misty's place? Landing an amphib on uh, on the ground is kind of a sloppy process, but we can th we can thump it on and uh, might let us park a little bit quicker. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and try to land on the gravel at Misty's place. All right, here's a look back up north at the Beam Canal where we came from. Don't see any cruise ships up there. Heading home, heading home. That, just in front of the uh, aircraft nose there, is a lava bay, and there is a cabin up there, and I think you can just barely see right there by the mouse cursor a little plume of white smoke. It's just in front of the airplane strut now, just touching the strut. That is the lava bay cabin right there. We saw it on the way up, right? That's Mary's Island out there. We, we want to start heading over that way is what we want to do. So, I think it's time to go ahead and take the GPS uh, tracking mode off the autopilot here. Go ahead and just put her in heading mode. Slew the heading bug over this way. Let's go see if we can find a lighthouse at Mary's Island. Something I've always wanted to see. And uh, don't remember ever really flying over it. Here we go. Jump over to the right seat here for a minute. We can look for our cabin. Hey, yeah, see there's the plume of smoke right there. The cabin on the lava bay. That's a fun place to fly into. Pretty scenic. And there's a whole bunch of cabins over here too, up behind here. Um, we've got, what do we got? Ella Lake Cabin, the Manzanita Lake Cabins, Lake Grace Cabins. Uh, there's several of them up there. That's a that's a fun trip out of Catch Can as well to bounce through all those cabins. All right, straight ahead we have Mary Island, and 
How we doing on gas? Yeah, we've almost run that center tank empty. I would assume that yellow light's gonna start flashing at us pretty quick. We'll wait till it does just to see it happen. Surprised we can't. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm surprised we cannot see the light from the lighthouse yet, and I saw it just to the left of the nose, right around here. Let's see. Where is it? There it is, right there, right there. Watch right where the uh, right above the mouse cursor. We'll get another one here in about ten seconds. There it is. Probably should be minimizing the view changes just because it does tax the system a bit, but darn it, it's just so pretty out here in the evening, isn't it? And this airplane looks pretty good out here. There you go, put a little sunset light on it. Alright, looks like we're heading right towards the Mary, Mary's Island light or Mary Island Light. Let's actually descend a little bit, get a little better look at it. Let's go down to about, oh, 400 feet, huh? Make a slight right turn so the island, or the uh, lighthouse goes out, goes by the left side of the airplane, we can have a look at it. It's almost 70 degrees out there. I wonder if we need the carb yet. Maybe we'll try turning it off, see if we get any detonation. Yeah, running right along the yellow edge of that carb temp line, so we'll see if we get any detonation. There we go, we've leveled off. We'll slow down and take a little look here. What we need to do, that, to do after we pass the Mary Island light is start a right turn up through in that island. We'll have to find a way through the terrain over here somewhere. Well, there's our lighthouse. Pretty cool. Let's try an outside view again. Oh look, there's some birds over the lighthouse. Nice. Alright. And that really is what the lighthouse looks like in real life. I took a look at a picture of it, and so Orbex has modeled it pretty well. It is time to make a right turn. And a climb. Try to get up to about 2,500 feet. Take a look at my sectional. Uh, yeah, I think we want to come a little bit further to the right. We'll sneak through the terrain in here. So we want to put the uh, ADF needle point just off to the left of us here. And we'll look for a low spot in the terrain. That's probably what we want right there. We haven't gotten high enough on this entire trip to really have to touch the mixture at all, have we? We won't this time either. 2,500 feet, I think, is about as high as we'll go. Yeah, I think we'll make 
2,500 feet, coming through 1,300 right now. feet to go. Probably climb a little bit quicker. Try a thousand feet per minute. We do have five people on the airplane though, us plus four passengers plus all their gear and all their fish, so we are fairly heavy. Boy, I'm really surprised we haven't run the center tank empty yet. sure what's going on with the performance all of a sudden here. Alright, that was where our flight plan would have taken us up north this way and around the north end of Annette Island, but instead we're going to fly right over Annette Island. Oh, look at that. See our yellow light just came on. Low fuel warning in the center tank. And it's going to flicker. We better switch back to the front tank here. There we go. That extinguishes the warning light. There, we're level at 2,500 feet. We'll let her accelerate a little bit. So, interesting uh, history, aviation and otherwise, on Annette Island. The Annette Island Airport was the original airport that provided commercial airline service to the Ketchikan area. And uh, Pan Am actually served it back in the, I want to say, late 40s into the 50s. And then a series of other airlines served it. And Alaska Airlines finally ended up winning the contract to serve Annette Island. And Alaska actually would fly jets into the Annette Island Airport. And then they had uh, amphibs, grum and geese, goose, grum and gooses, however you want to say that, and, uh, and a couple other amphibs. And they would run folks from the Annette Island Airport. They'd shuttle them over to the Ketchikan Harbor, which was where we were. It was our first landing on this, uh, this trip, Ketchikan Harbor area. So the Ketchikan International Airport is fairly new to this area and really changed how things work up here. It really changed the accessibility to the outside world of the people of Ketchikan. The Annette Island Airport does not get airline service these days. As a matter of fact, it's charted as a private airport, though it is still on the sectional chart, so I think somebody still uses it. I believe the tribe that uh, lives in the Metlakatla settlement which I'll show you in a minute here. I believe they own the airport now. There is the Annette Island Airport behind the hills over there. We'll just fly up this valley here. We'll get a look at the airport off the left. Boy, it's kind of pretty here in the interior of Annette Island. I don't think I've ever actually transited right over the island like this. I've always kind of gone around it. Pretty neat up here. Interesting. I have to come back and check this area out sometime. Yeah, we are skimming along the tops of the clouds here. As soon as we get clear of the high terrain, we'll duck back down a thousand feet, I think. say that uh, I think this is Bostwick Inlet right here. Misty's place is up at the head of that, so we are almost home. Almost home. Getting some terrain blurries here. I think probably the uh, evening light and these multiple cloud layers here are taxing my system a little bit as it's running the recording software. 
It certainly does run nice and smooth without the recording software, but the recording software is always a drain. So here is your Annette Island Airport. I believe there's one paved runway, and I believe that's a gravel runway. And I think that what you can see here, this orange coloration and a collection of buildings there, I think that's the Misty Moorings uh, scenery tester stuff I never turned off. So it's just a collection of buildings that verify you've got all the Misty Moorings libraries installed correctly. Sitting there in the Annette Island Airport. Down here you have a seaplane base, and it is the uh, Tamgus Harbor seaplane base right there. I would say that's it right there. And over to the right there, that is the settlement of Metlakala. I'm going to go ahead and start a right turn towards Misty's place. And we'll come down a thousand feet while we're at it. Actually, we'll come down to a thousand feet, how about that? jump over to the right seat again for a better look. Hopefully that sun glare will go away once we level off. But yeah, that's Metlakala. And um, in addition to the seaplane service that Alaska ran from the Annette Island Airport to uh, Ketchikan, which is up here, they also ran, well not Alaska, but there also was a ferry system that operated from Metlakatla to uh, the Ketchikan area. I'm not sure if it still operates, but you can see that it actually uh, had operated through some more open water up through, I think this is Nichols Bay here and on up, and so there were times when actually aircraft could land in a net island, but the ferry from Metlakatla could not get into Ketchikan just because uh, this fairly exposed water out here and it was pretty rough. And you got a little fleet of fishing boats in Metlakatla there. Sorry, I was intentionally looking through the window so we can see through the sun glare. Not particularly realistic, but I'm not going to circle around just to show you Metlakatla. But, alright. That is, uh... Bostwick Inlet right in front of us, and I can see the lights of Misty's Place shimmering up there in the distance. said the wind was uh, out of the northwest at five knots, and you can see that the gravel runway at Misty's Place will evolve a little bit of a right turn from here, so it's probably about a 3-2, and so that'll be perfect. We'll go straight into the gravel. Lights of catch can shining in the distance here. level off, bring the cruise power back in. It's getting dark enough that I suppose we should turn our landing light on as we approach Misty's place here. Huh? There you go. It's an interesting, uh, note on the chart for the north end of Annette Island. It's got to be over here somewhere. It says Chinatown. And, uh, it's not really charted as a town, so I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if it's just an area. Chinatown. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is. But I don't think we'll see it today. It would be over here somewhere, so I don't know. Bostwick Inlet, the lights of Misty's place straight ahead. This here is uh, scenery from the Misty's Yacht Club. It's there and uh, there. I believe those are both wrecked ships. And there is, uh, during the day anyway, there's a, 
the sailboat that sails around out here, and there's a little marina just tucked back in this cove here. The idea is that the folks from Misty's Place just uh, created their own little sailing club out here. It's kind of fun. Whew. I'll tell you what, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to feel like it's been a long day. I am ready to park this, uh, this thing for the night and go get a beer. <laughs> I may have been a little optimistic in my uh, day in the life of a bush pilot. I mean, it probably was realistic in terms of a long day for a bush pilot, but in terms of actually making this video, yeah, it was a long enough day. I don't know if I'll ever do any of these again, but if I do, I have a feeling I'm going to chop them into shorter segments. All right, we're going to start slowing down here. Since there is no gear indicator in the airplane, I like to actually verify the gear comes down. There it is. The gear is down. We are landing on a hard surface. Those two things are compatible. Autopilot's off. Props full forward. Cruise flaps are down. You can see right off the nose now a little yellow light. That is a bonfire that's next to a, uh, a cabin. And there's a smoke plume from the cabin, and the bonfire has its own smoke plume. And those things help you figure out the wind direction as you approach Misty's Place. You can also see all the red and green uh, lights from the navigation markers and the water portion of the Misty's Place scenery. Pretty cool. But to line up with the runway, what you want to do is come past just to the left of the bonfire. So. I had the nose down so we could see the scenery, but I do know I need to go over here a little bit, so let's get over here. As far as landing an amphib on wheels goes, I heard a pilot once compare it to landing a shopping cart. It's kind of a graceless plop onto the ground, and that's, I suspect, probably what we'll see today. You can't flare too much, because if you do, it's easy to, uh strike the aft end of the floats. Alright, so there's that cabin and bonfire. The wind looks good, just like we got the report from Ketchikan. I overshot final a little bit. We are a little fast. Here we go. Whoa, that was weird. Alright, there we're down. Here's some braking. stick all the way back through that because I don't trust the little nose wheels on those floats. And there we go. Whew. Done and done for the night, huh guys? That was enough of that. And remember, no, uh, no nose wheel steering on these floats. So, we're steering with differential braking. Sports are excited. They're looking forward to their hunt tomorrow. We are just looking forward to parking this airplane and being done for the evening. The landing light effect is good, but let's not blind anybody, huh? Let's turn off the landing light and the pulse lights at this point. In front of this old uh, Ace Air Charters sign here, I think, is where we started. That seems like a good enough place to put her to bed.
little bit of a freeze up there. Whew. That is enough of that. I mean, I haven't played with this much, but I think that we can do... Let's see here. Put some chocks on. And look at that. There's our, our bush gust lock. <laughs> our seat belt around the yoke. I think we can also put our uh, pedo cover on. Open the door. Got our sports out. Got them going where they need to. And there is our trusty steed put away for the evening. Look at that, the pedo cover's on. I believe you can put the prop cover and uh, cowling on and air cover and everything on too, but we don't need to do that. It's uh, it's just fall. Alright. Nice peaceful evening in Misty's place. Bet you guys thought I was kidding about that beer, didn't you? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Head over this way. There's my good old girl, the steerman in the hangar there. There's the fuel shed. But we are interested in heading right over here. To the Misty's Bar. That sounds like a plan, huh? And look at that, our buddy's here waiting to buy us a beer. Alright. Well, we'll do it again tomorrow. <laughs>